Okay, we're uh, Comp 308, and it's week 10, lesson 10, part 4. And yesterday we talked about assignment number 3. And we talked about assignment number 3 because I wanted you guys to start. Hopefully that gave you a bit of a kickstart to get your, your butts in gear to finish off assignment 3, which is due next week, right? On the Friday. So, um, if you, uh, again, hopefully you started yesterday. If you didn't start already, assignment number three, please get to it because, again, it's due next week, and there are a lot of little piece parts to get done. Um, certainly, you can get it done in short order. It's not a, not a long assignment. You can probably knock it off in a, probably a day or two, right? But um, if you don't start, it's going to be a lot to accomplish in one day. One thing that, the good thing is there is no external documentation change, so that's one thing you'll be saving for assignment number three, uh, as opposed to have that extra little requirement. Okay, well, let's talk about MongoDB today. So that's what we're working on. Here on the Mac, I'm going to go to Terminal. And if I want to know if I have Mongo installed, uh, installed I'm going to go Mongo minus minus version. See if I can do that. And it shows me I have a MongoDB shell version of 3, right? On the PC, I'm just going to shut this down. Um, for those people who don't have Mongo installed, I can do the same thing, Mongo minus minus version. And I have Mongo shell version 2.6.7, right? So you saw there's a difference in my Mongo. Um, if I want to install, from an installation perspective, installing MongoDB, again, I'm going to go to uh, mongodb.org. And in here, you have your download section where you can certainly download and install um, MongoDB for different uh, systems. And my version here is it's showing me that I should be downloading for 64-bit. Um, now, there's also legacy. What would you do if, if you had a Windows 8 system? Windows 64 2008 R2 or Windows 64-bit legacy? What would you download? And again, if it's something you have, to, you have to think about when you download your stuff. Um, and so this is how you, you there's installation instructions on how you download and install it, as an example here. And um, this is runs on Windows Vista, Windows Server 2003, Windows Server 2008. Uh, this runs on Windows 7, and it doesn't show Windows 8, but I'm guessing it'll probably run on Windows 8 as well, which is this MongoDB for six, Windows 64-bit, right? Not the legacy uh, version, right? So let's, I'm going to reinstall my Mongo because mine on my Windows is um, kind of older than the one on my Mac. So it says R2 in this legacy, and the R2 legacy, I'm going to go with this one and click download. Right now... It's only uh, 78 megs. It'll take some time to do it. One thing we got to talk about today for Mongo is we need to refresh our skills. Um, and again, I'm assuming that you guys don't know about Mongo, don't know how to use Mongo very well. Um, we got to refresh our skills when it comes to JSON. And we need a couple tools in order for us to do that. There's some really cool tools online that we can use. I'm just going to install my MongoDB here locally and see what happens. See if it causes an error, right? They might say, oh, 301. Uh -huh. Newer version than, than the other one. I'm going to go accept, next, and I'm going to say complete and install. And hopefully that'll fix up my Mongo installation and won't mess me up. And if it messes me up, then I'm going to have to fix it. And there's ways of fixing it. I'm going to I have to change my environment variable some, sometimes to make sure that I can access Mongo from the command line. Yeah. Right, but again, if you have a 32-bit Windows, we have Vista. Windows 7. Should be using 64-bit, theoretically. Right? Okay, let's check it out and see what, what it's done to me. So now I'm going to shut down my terminal and go back. And remember, my Mongo version was 2.6.something or whatever, 2.8. If I go Mongo minus minus version, right, I have 2.6.7, which is bad, because that means it, it's still pointing at the same shell that it pointed at before. Why? Because my environment variable is pointing to that same place. So the only way that I would point to, and it's pointing at, look, um, um, I have to look at where Mongo is installed in my system. So if I go to my uh, Internet Explorer, I'm oh, sorry, um, fold, uh, uh, the uh, Windows Explorer, or Windows uh, Finder, or whatever you want to call it equivalent, um, and if I go to my PC, C drive, and if I look at uh, program files, right, as an example, um, 
I want to see if I can find Mongo in here. It's not here. Maybe it's on program files, 80, uh, the program files, the 64-bit side. And here's MongoDB. But if you notice, there's another one that says 2.6 standard. So I got both, right? This was installed February 23rd, right? And this one's installed today, right? And if you notice, there's it's a server 3, and then if I go to bin, it has my Mongo stuff. So this is the actual path. Server, program files, MongoDB, server 3, bin, right? Okay, well, I got to look at my environment variable, and for order for me to do that, I got to go into my control panel, and, um, and again, I can set up Mongo as a service too. But for now, this is easier. And I want to go into my, um, my Windows system menu, right? And if you look at advanced system settings, and if I go to um, environment variables, right? Then inside of this, you're going to have a, if I edit this thing up, you can see that I'm pointing at uh, Mongo 2.6 standard inside the bin directory right here, right? I don't want this anymore, right? So I'm going to kill it, right? I'm going to just erase that Mongo directory because I don't want it confusion. And now what I want to do is go back to this thing, right, where I have my path up here, right click and say copy address as text, right? And go back into my environment variable and paste that's important for me to do. So now it's got the right location for my Mongo. Press OK. And OK. Now, in order for me to make sure that it works, i got to do a couple things. Sometimes I may need to restart my system. I'm telling you this in advance. Otherwise, it won't work properly. Right? Um, sometimes it's OK if I don't restart my system. And the way to check that, of course, is to do Mongo minus minus version. Right? And I'm good to go. 301. Right? You guys have this. Yeah. It means you're 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 um, you're not you haven't installed it inside your environment variables the way I just did. You need to install it in your environment variables, so you don't have access to it in command prompt. The environment variables. Was that? That's a, so you're running it as a service. That's a different thing than running it in on command prompt. Right, that's a different thing. So it's always running, so you don't have to run any command prompt. The reason why I run any command prompt is so I can access the command prompt, so I can access the the, um, um, the MongoDB uh, interpreter. I can get into that side of things, right? As opposed to um, running, I don't run it as a service. I can turn the service off and on this way through command, my command prompt. Let me show you. So if I go MongoD, right, and I run and I, I press enter, now it says, do I want to allow this? I say yes, of course, I want to always allow access. And now, if you notice, it's running on port 27017, 27017, which is the standard port for MongoDB, right? I run another, I can run another session. Here's my session. And now if I type in the, in the command Mongo, I have access to test, right? So if you notice here, I'm, I'm connecting, I got one connection now. I can do a local connection here, so I can test my Mongo. And I can do uh, my first command that you're going to show you on MongoDB is show DBS, which is going to show me my databases. Yeah. Sure. Let's go do the environment variable again. Okay. And you guys are all looking at me like I got two heads. Huh? You can, but I don't recommend that because then you might have a clash because you're using the same port. We have to respecify the port for the service, right? Um, so let's just exit from here. Um, let's go back into my environment variables again. I download it. First, I got to find this. This is the way you do it. First, you have you have to use your Windows Explorer to go into your C drive to find where Mongo has been installed. I have two installations of Mongo, right? In my program program files, I have MongoDB by itself, which is installed today, and I have another version, MongoDB 2.6 standard, that I installed February. All right, so I have two different versions. I want to point to this one, so I, I dial into it. So this is under Program Files. I find MongoDB, double-click, right? I go to Server, double-click. I go to 3.0, double-click. I go to Bin, double-click, and now I'm in the right place where all my executables are. Here's all my executables, right? Bin? That's fine. So this is where you get, when, when you get into Bin, 
right? You can right click on the tool, the, the bar here on the top, right? But if you're using Windows 7 or Windows 8, you can do this. Um, right click, and then you say copy address as text. Right? You see that? Once you do copy address as text, now you get to pull up your um, uh, control panel, right? Build up your, pull up your control panel. I'll wait for you guys to catch up. Control panel, are you there with me, Lilia? Yeah. In your control panel, you got to uh, click on system, right? In your system, you got to go to advanced system settings. In your advanced system settings, you got to click environment variables. And inside there, you got to look uh, for your path variable. This is the one you want to change, the path variable here up, so up top. If it doesn't exist, you got to create it, right? It's got to be called path variable. And in here, you're going to edit it. And in the end, you're going to put a semicolon and uh, paste in the path to your Mongo. That's how you do it. I know it's a lot of little changes, but once it's done, you have access to Mongo on your, on your command prompt, which is really important for Windows. And on the break, what I'll do is I'll come around and help you guys set up. Yeah? You'd have to shut down your service. Right, and then from there it won't it won't conflict with the same port because you're still trying to use the same port, twenty seven zero one seven, right? And then when you shut that down, you can actually use this way too. Both ways work, right? It's just that you can't run both, yeah, unless you run two different ports, which you can specify. Yeah. So you could say MongoDB instead of MongoD with this with a twenty seven zero one seven, you could make another server run on another port, right? Just be careful; it's like running two servers at once in the same machine. So again, I would do. Um, again, I would just just back up a little bit. I went to I went to my um, control panel. In my control panel, I went to a system, right? I'm gonna back up here. I went to system. From system, I went into advanced settings, which pulled this up. From advanced settings, I went to environment variables, and inside environment variables, I gotta go into the path variable and click edit. And then from in here, I got to add the path on to the end of this long string, this long path string, which is a really long one. I have Ruby and other things in here too. Uh, I got to add a semicolon in the end, and then copy and paste my path at the end. And if I'm good, then I should have. And if you if you when you press OK and you exit out of this thing, again sometimes you may have to reboot your system in order for the path for the for the path to take place to take effect. At other times, you may just need to restart your terminal application. Your command prompt. Okay. And I'll go around and check to see if that works with you guys on break. Okay. So I've got that. Let me just go back into the Mongo server again. Again, let's do this again. Two piece parts to making Mongo, to have access to Mongo. One piece part. You have to run MongoD on the Mac. If you're a Mac user, you've got to do this with super user access. So you have to go with sudo space MongoD. Let me show you that. If you're on Mac. So here, here's on Mac. I can't just go MongoD, right? Because MongoD is going to say you don't have access. But I could do something like this, sudo MongoD, right? And if I'm good, then I should be able to run on port 27.017 on the Mac side. Similarly, on the Windows side, I just press MongoD, and it's running on this side. So I've got two servers running, one on the Mac, one on Windows, but they don't conflict because they have different IP addresses, right? Okay, cool. Now that I've done this, on the Windows side, I need another terminal to run in the Mongo terminal, right? So I'm going to just type, instead of MongoD, I'm going to type Mongo. And now, if you notice, I have a connection. I made a connection from this terminal window into my Mongo server, right? Same thing as on this side. If I want to do the same thing, I want to run a new um, configuration file, and I'm going to say Mongo. And now I have access to my Mongo shell here in my terminal. I can just minimize this one. This one just holds hosts the actual server. So I'm going to minimize this thing. And same thing with this one. I'm going to minimize this one. I don't need to touch this one anymore. As long as it's open, I'm good. Okay, cool. So I got both Mongo servers running on both Windows and Mac. It's very similar, as you can see. Now the first thing, the first command you should implement is this one. Show space DBS. Okay, and what this does, for me, I have two databases, if you will. Um, now, there's some different terminology here we're going to talk about with Mongo, right? Mongo doesn't have 
um, tables and they don't have um, records uh, as in SQL. Mongo has um, collections and documents. Right? It's a totally different uh, way of looking at things. So right now I have my bookmarks table and my local table, uh, local, local uh, uh, database. If I want to use one of these ones, I just have to do one of these. I can say use bookmarks. And when I do that, I switch to the database that's called bookmarks. If you don't have bookmarks, it'll create it for you just by doing use. Let's go back. If I want to use a different one, let's make a new one for ourselves. We'll make a use users. Okay, what to call the database? Well, actually, we won't call it users. We'll call it um, um, comp 308. Let's see if I can do that. Here's comp 308, right? And um, I'm going to make a new collection, right? And how do I do a new collection? I go db.insert, right? And when I do db.insert, I want to insert, it asks me if I, if I say, what do I want to insert, right? For example, if I go db.find, I can't do db.find on a, uh, on the, on the uh, database. I got to go, I got to in, in, uh, kind of install a collection. So again, from a, from a documentation perspective, if you guys want to know where all this stuff is that I'm getting, just for a second, if you go to mongodb.org, and you go to uh, learn, there's a, a bunch of free courses you can learn on how to do stuff with uh, some training if you want to go there. But the documentation is where you really want to look at because it gives you all the different access, uh, you know, kind of getting started. There's a getting started section here, not just the installation, but basically how do I access my system? How do I actually install all my commands? And the, and the documentation here tells me how to do all that here, not just on sharding, but data models. But for example, if I look at look at CRUD operations, it tells me how to do um, creating, um, reading, and writing, and all that stuff, um, and deleting, right in here. So here, db users .find, and I can find users. But I need to have this users collection. So again, if you're unclear about how to do that, and I want to show you guys in the command line first, because this is going to be the exact same way you do things, um, pretty much in code. So you don't unsure how to do it, you go something like this. You say um, inserting collection MongoDB, right? And I'm just going to pick the first one. Look what it says, DB, whatever the collection name is, and insert, right? So let's go back out to this. So if I go um, show collections, right now I don't have any collections. Right? Show collections is a generic command that you can use to find out what, any collections that you have in your database. Right now, my database is empty. Even though I'm using the comp through eight database, it doesn't exist. Right? So once I add a collection, though, I create my database at the same time. So now I'm going to do this db dot whatever my collection name is, users, right? Dot insert. Right? If I do that, Actually, it means it's actually like this, right? <coughs> Sorry. First of all, show DPS. And if I go use, like I said, I have to go use um, comp 308 and then DB, whatever the, the collection is. So users. And then if you look at the documentation, right, for how to insert collections. And this is the way to do things, collection.insert and whatever the collection name is, right? So here's my insert method, right? And if you notice inside my command, I have to insert, um, this is inside my products, I'm inserting something, but how do I create um, you know, a collection. So I'm inserting into the collection, right, is my operators, right? How do I insert a collection? How do I create a collection? Right, so again, that's the wrong thing I asked for. So it creates collection MongoDB, right? 
Okay, here's my create collection method, right? Is that the way to do it? Right, because I need to add a collection. I can't just say users dot whatever, can I? Well, in fact, you never have to mention this DB collection insert. You just have to say that whatever the users is, whatever the collection you want in, this is the funny thing with Mongo, you do something like this, DB users insert, right? And now you put in your, your JSON, like this. You say, yeah, I'm gonna, actually, I'll, I'll, um, I'll pull this up a little bit so you can see it. So here it is, right? DB users insert, like as if we had a, a, a users collection, as if we had, right? And I'm going to say, well, I need to increase, um, install some JSON, right? So I know I have a username, right? So whatever my username is, here's my, here's my field, colon, and my username, Tom, right? Comma, and then my password field, and my password value, key value pairs, right, in, in JSON, so secret whatever I want, and then close off the these um, braces, and then close off the parentheses and press enter. Now, if I go show collections, I have users. And now I can do something like this. If I go db.find, right, go db, sorry, users.find, and press enter, I have my first user. It shows me my record. Here's my, my document. My document has an ID that was system generated, right? It has a username, which is Tom, and a password, which is secret. Okay, if I want to see this, if I want to see this thing as a JSON document, then I go like this. Um, let me see if I, if I don't know if I have a clear command on this one. Yes, I do. I can go like this. I can do... Um, db.users.find, I'm going to do this again, don't worry, if you missed it, right? And then for each print JSON. And it shows me what it would look like in, from a JSON perspective. Do you guys know how to do this? Are you shown ever? This would be bad, right? Because this way you could test your database nicely, right? And you can in insert things here as well. Do you guys use Postman for inserting things into your MongoDB? You ever tried that? Yes? Yeah. Uh, there's an actual uh, little um, download you can install uh, for your uh, Chrome or Firefox. It's called Postman, where you can actually do gets and puts from your, uh, um, in your database. But for now, let's leave that alone. You have to have a server running and so on. Um, so, okay, so I've installed this first user, and I have... Um, the one thing to know about NoSQL databases compared to SQL databases is there is no relation. I don't have a relationship between um, one key value pair and another. I don't have a relationship between one collection and another, right? I haven't done that, right? Um, the way I do it is I, it's, a, it's almost like a flat file, like a flat JSON file. So there is no relational database element. And the other thing is that MongoDB, like most SQL database, no SQL databases, is unopinionated, right? So it doesn't have a schema. There is no schema. Now, if you use something like CouchDB, right, which is another no SQL database, that's more of an opinionated no SQL database, and it gives you, it kind of forces you to do certain operations, um, you know, within a certain way. There's certain operators you can use with uh, CouchDB that's much more difficult to use than MongoDB. MongoDB has some basic commands, right? And some basic filtering as well, options that we can look at, and they're the exact same commands pretty much as we would use in code. So if you look at the command, I can create my collection this way, right? By adding in this thing called log, I can specify, here's my create collection. And let's try this. Let's try and use this exact command. I'm just gonna copy this whole thing db create collection, right, and put this inside my um, my terminal here. So I'm going to go db create collection, so I can do this. Press enter, right, and if I go show collections, right, I have three things. I have log, system indexes, which I don't want to touch, right, and users. So now I have my log 
uh, collection as well. So if I go db.log.find, then I have um, nothing that I can find in here because right now it says I've created my collection, but there's no documents in the collection. I've only I've I've created uh, details for my collection. I say, well, it's it's truly it's capped. I've capped it off at this size, and the maximum is five thousand in terms of um, how big it's going to be. But if you look at here for for uh, for the type of of collections you can uh, you can use, you can create this use this create collection operator to add collections without actually adding anything into them. Okay, I want to add a document to my collection again now, right? So here's my collection. I've got my db log, right? I can go db.log.insert, and now in these brackets, right, I'm going to insert a new document, and I'm going to insert it in JSON format again, right? I'm going to call the document. I don't have to name the document. I'm just going to um, add uh, um, some information, key value pairs to this first document. So it's a log. So just keeping in line with that from a schema perspective, maybe I want something like um, I'm logging the uh, file name. My file name that I'm logging is uh, myfile.txt. Right? And, um, you know, I can have the um, date, right? If I want to have the date, and maybe my value is the, I believe is a current date time function that I could use, right? And these are all the different uh, operators right here, pretty much, right? Um, so let's say uh, MongoDB date, date time field. And I'm sure if I look through it, it'll tell me how to do it. Um, this does it in code um, with BSON, and that's what I'm using here, BSON, which is the um, a way of accessing, creating JSON files, or using JSON files to create collections and documents. Right? Let's see if there's another one that'll tell me how to do that. Um, these are the different BSON types. So actually, one thing I should mention also with MongoDB is that even though JavaScript um, is um, loosely typed, right? Now, aside from using something like TypeScript or CoffeeScript, um, but if you use TypeScript by, uh, sorry, uh, JavaScript by itself, really the only types you have is number, string, and Boolean, but most of the time you don't type them, you just, it's just of type any, right? Even though you do that, there's different types you can, you can um, um, specify uh, in Mongo, by specifying if it's a double a string, a, an object, and so on, because you want to be, you can be as specific as you want. But um, this is not what we want. We want to insert the date time, right? How do I? So here's a timestamp, the timestamp, which is 17 uh, bytes long, right? So I want to kind of add a timestamp in, right? If I go down here, a timestamp uh, in to my value. Right, so if you notice, it says I can establish uh, a variable here. Right now, let me question. Let me ask you this question: Could I do variable a this thing here in my uh, session? Well, the great thing is, let's just take this back a step. I'm going to erase this. Let me show you this thing for a second. This isn't just a MongoDB database uh, or terminal; it's also a JavaScript terminal. So if I go var a, and let's just do the same code here, is equal to new timestamp, right? It accepted it. var a is equal to new timestamp, right? And if I do something like this, db dot, and again, log dot insert, right? And inside my the log that I'm inserting, I'm putting in, um, you know, the file name, Right, that's my my key my key for my value, and my value is going to be uh, my file dot text. Let's say I'm just, that's what the, what's what it's called, comma. And now a new property. Uh, my new property is going to be called um, or field if you want. Uh, my new property is going to be called uh, um, date. Sorry, 
and I'm going to use what it says here, right? Um, in, instead of putting in a, a quotation mark, I'm actually going to make it an object, right? I'm going to close this off for a second because it's got to be properly closed. Bear with me. And inside my object, I'm going to make it so that it says, um, <clears throat> um, again, timestamp A. And if I've done this correctly, if I press enter, we're good to go, right? Now, if I want to look at it, if I want to say db.log.find, right, then it shows me that I've got a timestamp that's 00, zero. But it's okay, because um, we actually created this, this timestamp, of course, and whatever the timestamp would be was, was the date time. But again, the idea here is that you can create, and by the way, it automatically created my object, my ID, uh, as a system ID, right? It's automatic, right? Well, that means if I can use variables, that means that I can um, create my JSON file outside of this terminal program and copy and paste it as a variable and then insert it instead of inserting, using the same syntax to insert... Um, other things, right? So let's try that out. So first of all, who remembers how to do JSON really well, right? And what are the rules of JSON? Do you guys know? Well, if you ever want to check the rules of JSON, there's a couple of websites I would refer you to. One of them, let me go to JSON here, um, there's something called the JSON Online, uh, uh, JSON Editor Online, which I recommend, right? And if you notice on the left-hand side, there is an example of a JSON file, right? And on the right-hand side, you see what it looks like from an object perspective. And what it's doing here is actually it validates your JSON that you write here on the left-hand side. And if there's an error, it'll tell you there's a JSON lint is built into this, and it'll tell you that um, there's an error here. But you can also create it to look at the objects and move them around. So you can actually modify your JSON file right here before you insert it. So let's say you want to test out a schema. We're making a new database schema for users. And I want all my users to have a certain schema. It doesn't have to be because NoSQL doesn't care. Again, the rules of NoSQL, any NoSQL database, one, it's schemaless. Two, there's no relations between one object and the other, right? Three, there are no tables and there's no rows necessarily. It's not like that. And there's no, um, you have a database, but the two objects we want to talk about are collections, which are like tables on the SQL side, and documents, which are like records, that's what they're called. Collections and documents are like tables and records. That's the names of what we're using here, right? Okay, and each of the things we have in here are objects. So let's create a, a JSON file here, right? And we want to make it like as if I want to create a user, right? So I'm just going to kind of wipe this out. And I'm going to start typing my JSON data here. So I'm going to start typing my first things I need is my brackets, my... my uh, my curly braces here. I'm going to make this a little larger for you guys to see it. We're going to a uh, larger size. How's that? And unfortunately, I can't get rid of this. If I say this, it's going to produce another ad. Irrelevant, sure. Bye. Okay. Um, so if you notice here, I have my opening and, and closing braces, and inside my opening and closing braces, I'm going to start putting some user data. So one other thing I need is a username, right? Now it's still giving me, see this X over here? It says that it's wrong, right? I don't have, I have something I'm missing. If I hover over the X. So now I'm going to start typing other things. So my username, on my first record, my username is going to be called, like I said, maybe my name, Tom, right? Or it, maybe it'll be called Thomas, lowercase, that's a username, right? Comma. Okay, my password, and we're going to make it so it's secret again, whatever the secret password is. Oh, wait, I'm not going to put it up here, right? And now, this is cool, we have a couple of, this is like key value pairs, right? This is cool. But now I want to put an object inside of this, of this object. How do I do that? Well, I have to use curly braces again, right? So let's say I use these curly braces inside my curly braces. Um, uh, and it's giving me an error. It says bad string. Well, let's watch and see what happens here. Um, I want to put in there an object that has, um, um, it's going to be called user info, right? 
So the first thing to put is the name of the object. So it's, we're going to call this user info, right? User info. And then inside my object, now that I've named it, I can include different things, different piece parts to the user info. For example, my first name, right? Which would be Tom. Oops, sorry, colon. Uh, Tom. And my last name, I'm creating a schema for myself, right? Which is my big long last name. Big long last name, right? And maybe I have a uh, email, right? Which is something that's part of my scheme as well, which I'm going to have, you know, I'm going to use my, my public email that I use for, for spam, right? And maybe I have other things in here as well. Uh, like, for example, my URL, um, which I also have a public one that we use. So maybe I want to put my, full, my whole URL in here. So people, uh, let's see if I can do this, right? And, oh, I forgot a comma. See what it does? It tells me that I forgot a comma. Okay, cool. So I've got my user info, right? And... Um, this is one thing. So this, this is part of my JSON file that I'm making, right? Okay, that's one user. Well, you know what? I want to make another user. How do I do that? Well, the great thing is that I can surround this whole thing, right? If I want to make it an array of users, then I can make uh, these brackets happen. Let's make this happen properly, please. La and la. And la, right? That's an array now. So the array, can I do this? Is my question to you. So here's my array, and it's going to be a users array, right? So here's my users, right? Can I do this? So my users array has all these, these different elements, right? And my first user has, I mean, I'm missing a bracket, that's why it's giving me an error. My first user has a, um, this bracket goes to this one, right? This bracket goes to this one, I need one more bracket, right? Because this bracket here closes this piece. So this user info is this, this is an object, and then this is my first user in my users array. This is my users array, and this is the collection. Right, let's try this out now. So let me add another user. So I'm going to take this whole thing here, from here to here, copy, comma, and paste. So here's my second user, and we'll call this guy Mark. And he's got his password secret as well. His name is Mark uh, Smith. And his email is mark.smith at hotmail.com. We're making this up. And his email address is, uh, or his URL is marksmith.com. Making it up, right? Okay, cool. So this doesn't give us any errors in here, right? And if I take this whole thing and push it over here, it tells me that I have one object, one big object, with two users, right? The first user is in an array, right? And let me just minimize this. Actually, uh, I can scrunch this over here like this now. I have one, my first user is, has three objects in it, a username and, and, and a value, a password and a value, and a user info object, which is my third object, that has these objects in it, right? And now my second object is Mark, right, with a bunch of other user info. Now, if you don't know Jason, then this will be like, what is he doing, right? If you know Jason, it's not like creating objects in in um, in JavaScript JSON doesn't have that format and if you ever want to know what what you how you can build JSON files one another nice little website to go to if you go to JSON I think it's JSON um, if you go to JSON.org where it says introducing JSON they have the uh, they tell you how to build up um, your JSON format to learn how, how to put things together right it tells you when you want to make an object, you have to have this. Your curly brace, I'll make it a little bit larger, larger for you guys, right? So to understand objects, look at what it says here. It says, you need a curly brace 
some kind of string, a colon, and a value, right? Now, the thing is with values, if it's a number, you don't have to put quotations around it, right? That's the one thing. If it's a Boolean value, you don't have to put quotations around it. Uh, for example, true, false, and null. These, these normal things, you can avoid the value. Otherwise, it's a string um, and so on. A string, a number, an object, an array, true, false, and null. Those are the different objects you can put in the value, right? If it's an array, arrays are a set of values, but a value can also be an object, right? So that's what JSON formats look like. So here's an example of a value. A value could be a string, a number, an object, another array, and you know whether it's a you know a true, false, and null, right? And they give more complicated examples. But this is a great way of understanding how JSON you create a JSON uh, a collection. I'm making a collection here, right? And the collection um, this is this is a, a bunch of documents, a JSON document that I'm going to add into the collection. Okay, makes sense. This is how MongoDB stores its data, right? And in your, if you don't know this stuff, then when you use MongoDB, you'll be clueless as to what's happening, right? You have to understand JSON first before you use MongoDB or any NoSQL database. All right, cool. Let's go back to this. So I've got my, my example here, right? Here's my users and whatever. I already have uh, a user here in my database. And if I go show DBS again, and now right now I'm, I want to use comp 308, right? Back to that. And I want to go to show collections. I right? can see that I have a log collection and a user's collection. What if I want to drop a collection? How do I do that? Well, go back to the, the let's go back to our, um, our documentation, right? I can get collection. Um, I can drop collection. Let's see how I can create a collection, right? And I can drop a database. Here's drop database. How do I drop a collection? Can I can I delete or remove? Here's remove. I can remove users. Now that's a different thing because a database also has users and uh, username and password to actually get into the database. Right now I haven't set that up, and you can for your for your uh, database, right? But it's the the same idea. I can drop a whole database by using this drop database command. This one, right? So this one, I would just go db drop database. And then whatever the current database is, it's gone. So let's say if I want to drop the users, the, the whole um, uh, users database or the whole comp 308 database, all, and it doesn't, it doesn't give you a warning. It doesn't say, hey, by the way, warning, you're going to drop the database. It says, OK. It'll accept it. So be careful when you do this. So if I want to drop db dot drop database, let's try this out on some other ones, drop database. And I want to say, when I, whatever I'm pointing to right now, that database is gone. Let's try it. Boom. Dropped. Come through. It's gone. Right? It's instantly gone. So everything I did, all my work, is over for Comp 308. And let's do the other one. Let's say use, I know there's another one called local, right? Let's kill that one too. Right? So db dot drop database. Dropped. It's gone. Show dbs. Right? I only have bookmarks. That's all I have left. Killed everything else. Right? Let's make a new one. So I'm going to say this. Use, let's not make the new one. Use, one way to do it, db, right? or I can say uh, I'm going to use my new database called comp308. Comp308. Okay, cool. Switch to comp308. And the comp308 doesn't exist yet, right? I'm going to clear the screen. Um, now I'm going to add in, I'm going to insert a collection. So db dot whatever my collection name what's my collection name now it's users but I'm going to add in a users object in a second right let's just call it users for now and see what happens users dot insert right and then inside my collection to put in my first document whatever that document's called okay cool well what if I want to declare my document as var doc equals to and now I go back to this nice little thing over here this little editor and I take all this stuff here Right? I'm going to copy it. I'm going to go back to my, my uh, file here. Right? I'm going to right click and paste. Take a look. And press enter. And if I say doc now, if I just type doc, right, it shows me my, my, uh, uh, the data that is pulled off of my website here. Right? 
Okay, now I can add this into my user's database if I want to, but there's going to be a trick here. Here's my, my first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to say, if I go uh, dbusers.insert, right, and I say doc, because I define what doc is, it says write result one. Now if I go db.users.find, well, it's going to show me everything in compressed format, right? There's my compressed format. It shows me users. If I want to see this in JSON format again, I would do it like, sorry, I would do it like this, db.find, find is the search command or the query on MongoDB, dot for each, capital E, right, print JSON, right, which formats it back in JSON if, I, if I've got, oh, I didn't, sorry, I didn't, I didn't use the users. i got to specify the collection, uh, for each, print JSON, right, so that is the users collection. But it's a user's collection, this is the problem, right, with a user's element in it. So what if I want to find, I don't want to, I, I don't want to include this thing. I, I want to kill this collection. I don't like this collection that I made. How do I kill my collection? So let me go back up to my top here, and I'm going to say uh, drop collection MongoDB. So I want to drop my collection. How do I do that? Hey, look, db.collection.drop. It's pretty straightforward, right? Like as you'd think it would be. All right, so I go back, and, well, can I use my collection? Can I do something? I can't use it, so I can't say db.collection.drop. I can't do that because there's no collection, but I could do something like maybe like this, maybe db.users.drop. Can I do that? True, right? Now if I go show collections, I don't have one. Now I'm going to make a new collection, but before I do that I'm going to modify my JSON file right up here, and I want to add in two users, right? So my, uh, now what if I kill this part, this, um, if I just do one of these, it's going to give me an error, bear with me, I'm going to just adjust this. Okay, so I've got two objects, right, in my collection, one object and the second object, but I've got these square brackets here. Well, this is an array, an array of users, so I'd have to do one of these square brackets out here, and this one would have to be a square bracket because now it's an array, right? And if I look at, if I go back to the other side here, right, and I push this over, now I've got an array. The array has two elements, element one, which is Thomas, and element two, which is Mark, right? These two elements, as an example. If I want to shift these things around, so I want to make Mark first and then Thomas, I just take this little thing here in my little tool and pull it up. And now, if I can do this, let me see if I can do this. Oh, I did it again, I did it twice. Hold on a second. I reordered this thing. Now I can put it, push it back, right? And when I do that, now everything's reordered to the way the other way around. If I want to make my mark my first user, here's the other thing. I can also with this little online tool, I can I can minimize like this, right? So I can I can minimize my JSON, and I can also maximize my JSON again, right? So minimize, maximize, right? And this nice little tool, right? So this allows you to format to test out your schema before you do any kind of commands with JavaScript. Because JavaScript commands, the problem with it is we don't understand, if we don't understand this, then JavaScript commands to us are like, we're running blind. We don't know what the hell we're doing, right? When we do our, our creation, deletion, all that stuff. All right, so this is the first piece. So if I want to push this whole thing now onto my collections, I'm going to take this whole thing. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to go back to the, to the command line here, my Mongo command line. I'm going to clear my screen. And I'm going to say this, I'm going to say var doc, I'm going, to re, I'm going to redo my doc, is equal to control V, if I can right click and paste, and press enter. Now if I go doc, right, it shows me my, this stuff here, this array. Now can I do this? First of all, let's see what I'm, where I'm at. So if I say, um, I know, I want to go db.show, oh sorry, show dbs. I've got my comp 308. 
cd comp 308, or sorry, use comp 308. I'll be okay. And now I can go show collections. Make sure there's nothing there. Nothing, right? db.users.insert, and now I'm going to put doc. Enter. Okay, it says bulk write result, right? Let's see what the difference is here when I do this way, when I enter an array. Now I'm going to go db.users.find. Okay, a couple of users. Okay, let's take a look at them. db, let's clear the screen, cls, db.users.find for each and print json. Two users, right? One of them is called um, with an ID of 55099CEB, give me an ID, and the other one with an ID of 5509s. If you notice these IDs, by the way, they're just expanded timestamps. That's what they are. They're 17 characters long, and they're the expanded timestamp inside your database. You can actually extract this ID later on. We'll talk about that another time. But really, at the end of the day, you can also specify the ID. If you put in this underscore ID, you can specify a specific ID, like for example, if you want to start records of 0 and 1 and so on, you can do that and not accept not accept these system um, generated IDs if you don't want to. Let me show you how to do that. So if I go back to my JSON editor online, and now if you notice my username is there, my password, everything is here, but I'm missing this ID, right? So I want to add that in. So I'm going to say I'm going to add in a new thing called, <coughs> sorry, um, it's called underscore ID, right? And I can make it so it's a number, for example, zero. Because remember, I can, I can accept uh, strings, numbers, uh, Boolean values, and so on. And the same thing goes with Thomas1. I can make this in my schema. I can, I can choose to put the ID in as a number, right? These are my numbers, right? Okay, now let's go and drop that collection again in my database. So I'm going to say db.users.drop. True, right? If it says false, by the way, it means it didn't work. <laughs> if you ever see a false. Okay, so if I go deep, so show collections, there's my system.indexes again. I've got nothing. So let me insert that now. So I'm going to say var doc is equal to, I don't have to uh, declare it again, but I like doing that. I want to have this array of this stuff comma, or copy, go back in and right-click paste. So I've included the ID now. Before I didn't. Enter. Right? And now I'm going to say cls db.users.insert doc. Enter. Bulk write result. Tells me what I've done. I've inserted two. Let's take a look at what I got. db.users uh, dot find dot and you know what let's do the um, for each and I'm gonna look print JSON these are very basic commands okay cool here's my IDs and if you notice it's not that long system ID anymore it's ID of zero and ID of one so you could use a schema in your database even though uh, NoSQL again let's go over NoSQL again NoSQL is schemaless NoSQL is unop un unopinionated the way we implement NoSQL is the type of NoSQL database. MongoDB would be one. Firebase is another one, right? And so is CouchDB. There's different kinds of NoSQL databases out there, right? Uh, so here what we're doing is we can specify an ID instead of having the database declare it for us. Make sense? And here I've got two users. Now, what if I wanted to find a specific user. How would I do that? We're going to do some query operations now. But before we do that, we're going to stop this movie and take a short break and come back and we'll do some query operations with MongoDB.